All right, status update. It is past 9.30 on a weeknight. Alex is here. Now we have a battery that I bought for the scooter. This is a five cell lithium battery. We're using two cells of this, jumping off the balance connector to power up T-curve, the car. Uh, we now wanna see how we can control this. Now we don't have a nine volt battery for the controller, so we're gonna go get one. Late night pass run with Alex here. Hey. And it's well past our bedtime, but we need some nine volt batteries, so we're heading down to the 24 hour Kmart. Let's go. Only the finest batteries. Six nine volts for five dollars. Don't put these in your smoke detector, please. So basically what me and Alex are trying to do tonight is we're hooking the car up to a power supply, in this case the lithium battery. We've got the controller here. We're just going to try and use the car's original controller with it on the desk here. See if we can see what the signals look like on the board when we go forward, back, left and right and see if we can figure out how to control this thing. Alright, so let's try out the basic functions. We've got the rear wheels here, so we'll hit forward. All good, we'll hit reverse. So that appears to be working. We now have the steering. Alex, if you could hit left for me. Right, left. And right. And right. Excellent. So now all we have to do is figure out what's happening on this board to make this happen. Shouldn't be too difficult, but uh, see how we go. First of all, we want to look at controlling the main drive motor here. So we've got this power transistor here that controls the main motor sitting on this heat sink. Now, we don't know the part number, but what we've determined from a bit of observation is that it's a typical NPN based PWM motor controller. Nothing too complicated. So we've got our scope probe attached to the gate here of the transistor and we're just going to bring this up on the scope and see what happens. In true TK fashion, this is my venerable vintage 70s oscilloscope that I dug out of a skip. So we've got the probe sitting on the gate of the transistor. Now this car has forward, forward even faster, and then reverse. So let's see what we see. We'll try forward first. Here we can see a pretty standard 50% PWM signal. All good. Now let's try forward at full speed. So at full speed, the power transistor just turns hard on. Now let's try reverse. Now in reverse, once again, we can see that 50% PWM waveform. All in all, that's pretty expected. There's a power transistor and PWM is used to control the speed of the motor. So basically half of our plan for speed control is basically to get rid of this PWM nonsense. Rather than trying to run a PWM line off the Raspberry Pi, what we'll just simply do is abandon the multi-speed capability. We'll just send five volts hard from the Raspberry Pi to drive the power transistor and we should be good. However, we do still need to figure out how the car is controlling forward and reverse. So that's our next job. What we've determined after a lot of flip-flopping back and forth this relay does actually control forward and reverse for the motor. When we go forward, the relay sits in its current position. However, when we go into reverse, the relay basically switches the orientation of the two motor pins to enable it to spin in the opposite direction. Forward. Reverse. What we see when we go forward is the PWM signal being sent to the power transistor. However, when we go into reverse, we can see a signal switch the relay on, which swaps the motor leads, enabling it to turn in the opposite direction. So we're fairly confident we can control the main drive motor with just two transistors connected to the Raspberry Pi. One will turn the main power transistor hard on or off, and the other will control the reversing relay. Now this won't give us fine speed control, but for this stage of the project, it should get things up and running. Next, we have to look at the steering. I just noticed while I'm hunting around for pins that have anything to do with the steering. Look at these pins here. One of them has a solder pad, these other three don't, but they're not soldered. They're just sitting there doing nothing. It's very strange. All right, so far, just by running around with the scope, I found out that this pin on the main IC goes to three volts when you hold left on the controller. And this pin here goes to three volts when you hold right on the controller. Now I've tried putting three volts on those pins myself, just using a resistor and LED to step down the 7.2 volts battery voltage down to around about three. Uh, no such luck, but I'm gonna keep hunting. It is interesting that those pins do change. That was scary. It is interesting that those pins do change when I hit the steering buttons. Now we've figured out how to control the car electronically, we need to integrate the Raspberry Pi. What I've done is I've created a Python program 
that allows me to control a series of LEDs on the Raspberry Pi over a network. Now the LEDs are just attached to GPIO lines. We can then replace these LEDs with connections to transistors that will control the forward, reverse, left and right functions on the car. So just as a demonstration, I'll show you how it works. I've SSH'd into the Raspberry Pi here and we will fire up my little Python server program. So that's now listening for connection. We now come back over to my laptop here and we'll fire up the client application. All I'm doing is basically sending a single byte at a time to the Raspberry Pi with the status of three LEDs in it, whether I want them on and off. Now I had a bit of a hassle trying to figure out how to send a single byte over the network in Python. So currently it's a bit of a hack using the character data type, but we'll improve on that later. So as I tap these keys here, you can see the byte sent over the network changes and the LEDs on the Raspberry Pi flash. Very cool. All we got to do is replace these LEDs with transistors, wire them into T-curve up here, and we are good to go. I've just started working on trying to integrate the Raspberry Pi with the main electronics here, and I made a mistake. I was playing with this uh, steering control pin here. I tied it to 7.2 volts instead of, you know, half rail, 3.6 or whatever. And now the steering is stuck hard in one direction. Now I can still get around this if I tie that pin to ground. But, uh, you know, otherwise it's a bit frustrating. Believe it or not, by blowing up that pin on the IC, I've actually improved things. So when I was putting power onto that pin to activate the steering before, it was taking 15 milliamps, which I thought was pretty bloody high, just to turn on a few transistors that, you know, activate the steering. However, since I blew that up, the steering was hard on, so I cut the trace between the transistor network that controls the steering and the IC. Now, if I activate that transistor network directly myself, it takes less than one milliamp. There must have been more power being sunk in the chip and just wasted as heat and was probably going to blow something up anyway down the track. So, by blowing it up, I actually made things better. All we have to do to control the steering now is put some lovely voltage on this pin on the board here, which goes to our transistor network, which activates the steering. There's another pin that sends the steering in the other direction, and we're all good. So, uh, yeah. Here, I've gone and spliced a PNP transistor, a BC557, into the steering line. Now, I've connected the collector to, or the emitter, one of the two, to a 2.8 volt line on this board. There are no 3.3 or 5 volt lines. There's a 2.8 volt line though, so we're going to use that. Now, if I connect the base to 2.8 volts, nothing happens. If I connect the base to ground, we activate our steering. So if we replace that with the 3.3 volt lines and GPIO on the Raspberry Pi, our Raspberry Pi can use a PMP transistor to control our steering. That is awesome. While meddling with the steering, I found this point here. Now, when I pull this low, it actually fires the main motor. So we can use this point here to control the motor of the car. I've temporarily removed the transistor I was using to control the steering. Now I've put an, an NPN transistor here because we want to pull this low. So if we put voltage on the base of the NPN transistor here, we fire our main drive motor. So all we got to do now is rig up the two transistors for the steering, this transistor for the drive, and then one more to control the coil of the relay. I've just built this little board with two PNP transistors on it to control the steering and two NPN transistors to control the main motor drive and the relay that switches between forward and reverse. I then just have to hook these into the GPIO lines of the Raspberry Pi and we are basically ready to drive. Oh, and I have to put the entire car back together. Okay, I should have been filming. Um, I, I wired everything into the Raspberry Pi, I changed the code. And then something started smoking and I didn't see what. Um, not good. Not bloody chutney, I tell you. All right, we're rolling again. This time I'm filming. So what I've done is I've connected the Raspberry Pi to the car. What happened is I fired this up once already. We saw smoke and it wasn't really responding properly. One thing I did get wrong, I didn't have the... PNP transistors line, the uh, emitter connected to 3.3 volts. I had it connected to another point on the board. Another mistake I made was I hadn't flipped the way the GPIO controlled the PNP transistors. Um, you want to hold those high until you want to switch them on, then you pull them low. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, oh, bloody heck. Um, we're going to go ahead and power this thing up and see if it burns again. 
I mean, I'm assuming I blew something up. See, that should be happening. Okay, just realized my second dumb mistake. I hadn't actually connected the ground of the Raspberry Pi to the ground of the car's electronics. So God knows what the transistors thought they were doing. And I have possibly blown some of them up. Uh, hopefully not, because I don't have a lot more. Current status, the steering is non-operational. I got some twitches out of it before, but not much now. Uh, I can drive forward. That's great. However, if you listen carefully, the reversing relay is not activating properly, so there is more work to be done. I'm going to gonna keep pushing on here. Okay, we're back. It was a silly mistake with regards to the relay. What I forgot is the relay coil takes about 250 milliamps to switch on. Now, that's a lot of current, but it is a weird 5-volt relay. I was using a 10K resistor to drive the base of the transistor, which was limiting the current too low. Uh, to fully switch the transistor on given those conditions. I did some calculations, uh, calculated the necessary resistor given the fact that we had a relay that was drawing 250 milliamps, blah, blah, blah. So I actually needed a base drive resistor of around, uh, you know, one, one kilo ohm instead of 10. I put in a 470 ohm resistor and now, if you listen carefully, you can hear that relay switching on good and hard. So, we can go forward, we can now go backwards. Now our steering is still dead in the water. I have a feeling I have heavily ruined something there, so we will investigate further. Wish me luck. I think uh, having those PNP transistors running backwards on the Raspberry Pi and not to the correct voltages caused some problems. And that's what let the smoke out of some random part. Nothing on the board is obviously burned. I can't see any burn marks despite the fact the board did not pass the sniff test. So my current troubleshooting method with the steering is yanking transistors and testing them. Now here's my here's my little test rig. I got the collector hooked up to a 1K resistor and an LED, and then I got a emitter hooked up to ground here. And then I've got the base hooked up to another 1K LED, and we just touch that, and that transistor works. And that's annoying, because if this transistor didn't work, that might tell us why our steering doesn't work. But the transistor does work. Aha! Uh -huh. After a lot of head melting and brain twisting, trying to remember the differences between PNP and NPN, this little bugger, this A928A PNP transistor with a weird pinout, emitter, collector, base, whatever, this one is buggered. Wow, what an Australian word. The other one is fine. So I'm going to put the, this one in back in because it was fine. I'm going to very carefully replace this PNP with another PNP, a weaker one because these are actually rated up to like 3 amps. Um, see if the car chooches again. Shout outs to AVE, of course. Alright, I have replaced a blown PNP transistor with a smaller PNP transistor. So it might pull up again. Uh, we're going to be very careful. I'm going to plug it in. Alright. I don't know which way is on with that switch. Okay, drive works. Alright, I plugged the steering back in. I heard a twitch from the steering, which is positive, but then... Once again, immediately nothing. So, that was cool for about a split second. I thought we were actually going to fix it. Round two. Okay, I can steer right, but not left. I have a feeling the encoder's not not working right. I tried to repair it, I got it half working again, and then it died again, which suggests there's some bigger problem here. Okay, so we've replaced some more transistors that may or may not have been blown up. I'm going to give this one last test. Steering's plugged in. Nothing. Despite all my efforts, I can't fix the steering, so my last attempt is just gonna, like, I found some strange voltages on the main IC that I think are related to the steering based on the pins that are on, so I'm just gonna hack this thing off, and then we'll just give it one last little try before we give up on the steering forever. Alright, we've removed the main IC. Yep, so the radio controller no longer works. Um, let's just try and activate the steering, which we'll plug back in. 
Not feeling great about anything anymore. Yeah, not a cracker. Dead as doornails. Whoa! <laughs> Interesting. That's just driving it. Right. Left. Ah! Holy crackadoodles. But we can't go back to center. <laughs> uh, if we press red, we go right. Let's call that right. And then if we press yellow, we go left. How do we get back to center? You go both? Right. For a second. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter if you just touch it for a second. It'll go all the way. Ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it would be difficult. Before when we started, the main IC on board was really great because it was handling the self-centering of the steering. You could turn left and then when you let go, it would put the steering back to center. And you could do the same. You turn right and then it would put the steering back to center when you were finished. Now, we can turn in various directions, but we can't self-center. So what we're going to have to do, YouTube, is try and figure out how to wire these encoder lines into the Raspberry Pi so we can get full steering control back. Or we can just switch to a servo. Don't know what we're going to do. However, regardless, what I would like to say is we did manage to resurrect the steering by chopping off an IC and replacing some transistors, and I'm very proud of us. So, all right, fundamentally, what do we have done? We got motor control, forward and reverse working with the Raspberry Pi. That's excellent. We managed to blow up the steering... And by the end of the video, we've managed to get it back, kind of, but we don't have self-centering anymore. Whether or not we try and make this work somehow, or we replace it with a servo, I don't know. But fundamentally, we're getting yet another step closer to getting this project on the road. So, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a project without some hiccups, but that's just the way it goes. So, from TK and... Alex. Yeah, saying goodnight. TK out. Hooper out. Hush, baby.